Welcome back everybody. Today's topic is what is probate? What are the things that are going to be relevant when you find yourself in probate court? What are the questions you should ask? We're going to talk about four kind of big questions that you need to ask and know the answers to before you proceed. Go ahead, give a like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get started. As an introductory note, let me say that if YouTube's search algorithm works the way that I think it does, probably a few people who are watching this video will be watching it because they find themselves in probate court because they're dealing with the death of a loved one. So if that situation applies to you, let me say that I'm very sorry for your loss and my deepest condolences go out to you and your family. And I hope that this video provides some small measure of guidance going forward. And if there's any way that I can help, reach out to me below. We begin with the question, what is probate? Now, most people will bump into this question for the first time in the context of the death of a loved one, unfortunately. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever, that had some property that's eventually coming to them and they are told by a banker, real estate person, title, whoever, that they have to go to probate court in order to complete the transfer property. Well, let's start with, I own some property, real, intellectual, personal, whatever, doesn't matter. I wanna transfer this property to a friend of mine. We make a deal that you know, he's gonna pay me for it or you know, whatever it may be. We sign an agreement, could be a deed, could be a contract, some sort of legal agreement saying, look, this thing that I own, my car, my house, my whatever, I'm selling it to you. you. You have this now, you own it. Unsurprisingly, a dead person cannot do that. A dead person cannot sign a contract. A dead person cannot sign a transfer. So when someone passes and has a whole bunch of property in their name and they can't transfer it out of their name, what do we do? The probate court steps in. The probate court hears the case. They confirm that the person is in fact actually dead. They look at the will that is offered if there is one verify the will, confirm that it's true. If there's not a will, they investigate who the heirs may be. And then the probate court will appoint an administrator or an executor to administer the estate. This person will step into the shoes effectively of the dead person and distribute their property to this person, this person, this person, whoever's supposed to get it under whatever applicable law or under the will or whatever it may be. That's the point of probate. As I said, we have four basic questions that I'm going to highlight for you. These are things that you should know the answers to. I'm not going to go through every single node of the flowchart and every single document that will apply to every single situation based on the way that these different questions might be answered. That information is available elsewhere, including on my website, ryanreifer.com. The first one of these questions is, did the deceased die with a will or without a will? Because that's going to determine kind of which writ large which branch of the probate system you're going to be in. You should look in filing cabinets, fire safes, gun safes, attorney's offices, accountant's offices. It is of utmost importance to first and foremost determine if the individual who passed had a will or did not have a will because that will inform the entire rest of the process. Question number two is who are the heirs? Now this is easy to figure out if there's a will because the will is going to tell you. If there's no will, it's slightly more difficult and you may want to consult an attorney and it depends on what the Texas Estates Code says and depends on the deceased's marital history and children and blah, blah, blah. But your second question is who are the heirs? Who's going to inherit? Your third question is how large is the estate? Is it a big estate or is it a small estate? Because there are certain alternatives within the probate system that are only available for smaller estates, some with a will, some without a will. So if there's a whole lot of property in the estate or not very much property in the estate, that's the next question that your attorney is going to want to know the answer to. So get that stuff together beforehand. The fourth question that you want to know the answer to is what does the estate consist of roughly? And this is particularly important if the estate is small of knowing exactly what's in the estate, but it's also extremely important if the estate is large. Is there one house? Are there multiple houses? How are those houses held? Are there financial assets, stocks, bank accounts, retirement accounts, life insurance, pensions, IRAs, 401ks, social security? What's in the pot and roughly what's the value of each one of those things? If you have that information lined up before going into the probate process, things are going to be a lot easier for you. So that's all for today. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, just because I left a question off of this, 
maybe it's really important to you. And just because I highlighted a question here, yeah, maybe it's irrelevant for your situation. Consult your attorney. Every situation is unique. I'm trying to keep these videos nice and short and sweet because that's what y'all like. So inherently based on the time constraints, I can only cover so much. Thank you again for tuning in. Like, subscribe, drop a comment, and we'll see you next time. Take care.